Okay, we're back here and live in Las Vegas at the HP Gen 8 announcement. We're going to deep dive and we're going to drill down on, um, on all, the, all the guests, all the topics. And I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Mike Kendall, who is a Cube alum. Mike is the group manager of the intelligent infrastructure and options for the uh, uh, industry standard server group, which means that we're going deep on energy efficiency. All right, sounds all right. good. Welcome yeah. back. Good yeah. to see you again. Hey, good to see you. Pumps up the energy towards the end of the day here. Absolutely. So we were given, so just to go around and uh, Mike talk about what happened earlier in the day is had a lot of different conversations with folks from HP and analysts, independent uh, folks. You guys got really good marks on the, the technology. Um, and what really blew off, blew off everyone off the charts was the energy side of it, mm -hmm. the power, the cooling, and the space. Huge issue. Yep. HP's got the whole pod thing going on. We've seen that HP Discover. This has been a known problem. Mm -hmm. You guys have a unique solution. So share with us the, you know, the, what's going on there? Well, you're right. So energy is a, is a huge thing and, and space and how you cool all this because, you know, uh, nobody is, is doing less data. No one's doing less compute. And they're all trying to figure out how to put more compute, more storage, more networking into the same size data center trying to fit within that power envelope and that space envelope and that cooling envelope. So it's something that we really felt we had to tackle. And so, and, and as I've told people, this is a, a game of inches type of thing. You've got to go ahead and be efficient everywhere. you got to, you know, concentrate, can I run the memory faster but run it with lower power? Can I go ahead and get more efficiency out of the power supplies? Can I figure out how to reclaim trapped power? That's basically, you know, servers that are allocated 750 watts but they're only really using 400. Can I free that power up to run other their service so they can fit in those racks. Because sometimes those racks, if you go into a data center, are not totally filled up with systems because they think they're at the edge of their power and their cooling envelope. So those are all the issues we work to address. So my favorite topic is operating systems. It was my degree in, in college, my undergraduate in computer science. And two, no, three years ago, I interviewed um, Chandra Khan Patel at HP Labs. Mm. And he was at the beginning of pulling all this stuff together. A ton of work around sensors. Yes. And the topic we talked about was the data center operating system. And that was the notion that in order to have an operating system, you got to measure stuff. Yes. So one of the key things that you guys are doing is around measurement and data. Can you share with us some of the things that, that are happening around that? Yeah, so you have our concept of our 3D CS sensors that we've really expanded on. So when we did the, the G6 and the G7 servers, we went ahead and we put sensors down on, on the motherboard, approximately 30, 32 sensors on it, so we could precisely measure the temperature, so we knew how to you know, scale the fans up or slow them down more precisely, so you get good reliability, but you also don't waste a lot of fan power. Now, what if we expand that idea to not only do that in the motherboard, but do it three-dimensionally within the server, we get a lot more information that way, and then what if we go outside the rack, so we're able to also go ahead and even understand the location of a server within a rack and be able to track that information. So we now have sensors that are actually uh, in the rack that track what servers are in the rack, where those servers are, uh, and that kind of information. So we've done a lot of instrumentation of that. And then we've also made the PDU smart. So PDUs look like to a lot of folks as glorified you know, power strips. But if you actually put a brain uh, in them, Tell me what PDU means. Okay, uh, power distribution yeah. unit. Yeah. So to a lot of folks, that's, just, you know, that's where you plug yeah. things in. But it turns out that that's another place where you want to track power very accurately, what's going on. Fluctuations, in, et cetera. And, and everything else like that. But you also then want to know how you're hooked up, because that's a raw reliability issue. Because you got an A feed, a B feed, A size power supplies, B side power supplies. Sometimes what happens is you have people hook up their, their A and B sites only to one Same side. circuit. And then suddenly, you know, someone says, well, we're going to work on A. And they click the A site, and all of a sudden they go, but we know we're hooked up to the B site too. They click it off, half the rack goes dark. Whoops. That's a bad That's deal. human error. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the things you guys are talking about is this human error is a yeah. big piece. I tweeted earlier, that's a, that's a big part of the announcement. Mm. Talk about some of that automation because this is really game changing. It's a unique to HP. It's a big part of this announcement. You know, you got the thermal uh, discovery thing going on. That's yep. pretty huge. Yep. So just drill down. Give us more you know, knowledge around how this is all working because this is a big, big uh, tech feature that you have. Okay, so let's take like location discovery services. So the normal way you go ahead and, and track your assets is you go up to the server, it's got a toe tag on it. So one of the common ways is uh, take a, a laptop like what you have over there, and you have a spreadsheet, and you go ahead and fill out that. And on <laughs> this rack ID at this U location, you type it in. Or if you're really sophisticated, there's a barcode on that toe tag. You pull it out and you scan it with a barcode. Well, that takes a lot of time. That's a lot of effort. And then you've got to go ahead and make sure you don't make any mistakes on that as well, because if there's a particular problem with the server, you're trying to identify it you know, quickly, you know, you don't know exactly where it is. That's an issue. 
with our location discovery services, the uh, sensors we have in the rack and also in the server, when you push, as soon as you push that server in, that server can immediately query the rack and say, what rack am I in? What U location am I at? Puts that into ILO, sends that off to inside control so that you're able to uh, go ahead and see. And it actually auto-populates a nice picture of the rack right there. And then from there, you can go ahead and correlate that to you know power and, and, and thermal properties, et cetera, right there, and correlate all that stuff. And that, so that that's, takes a lot of time. The other thing real fast on the power discovery uh, stuff, too, is normally when you're wiring up a rack and everything or you're making any changes, you got to go ahead and, and document that once again, either in a spreadsheet, in a hand-drawn diagram, et cetera we go ahead and auto-populate that information so that you don't have to spend any time doing that. So it prevents mistakes. It also saves a whole lot of time on doing all the... Does it really do it that? It sounds too easy to me. Well, that sounds easy. It is easy. It just auto-populates. It's like auto, you know, boom. Yeah, What's because, the setup because, involved? Because plug we, it in? Because what we've done is we put, you know, microprocessor technology everywhere. And your car's got dozens of microprocessors. We came up with the bright idea of putting microprocessors throughout the infrastructure and into the, uh, into the server. And so uh, literally... Data center operating system again. Here we go. There you, there you go. And it's distributed, yeah, too. It's totally so it's, distributed. It's distributed computing. So Absolutely. Will, will customers be able to lower their power bill as a result of, of this, do you think? Or is that just a... Pipe dream. Uh, no, they should definitely be able to lower their power bill. Because, so one of the things we did uh, in the server itself, so you compare it to from like a G6, let's say, to a Gen 8. We are able through things like smart memory, more efficient power supplies, 3 dc sensors, just on the server alone, we're able to reduce the, the actual power usage. You know, take take a G6 configured with a certain amount of memory hard drive, same configuration for, for, for Gen 8, and you, we can reduce that power by at least 10% right there. Now, you couple that with the performance increase, and you may see, at a minimum, 70% uh, more compute per watt for, you know, in less space, effectively. So you can definitely go ahead and lower, lower that power bill. That doesn't even count the fact that in the rack itself, we've made the airflow more efficient, so you can lower the fan speed in the, in the servers and also your computer room air handling system. Okay, now hold on. So 70% uh, uh, improvement in compute per watt Yes. Now, some large portion of that is just going to come about because of Moore's Law. Right? Yes. So, so that's not going to save me any on the power bill. But the balance will, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. All right. Uh, All, although that will save you on the power bill. If, you, if you're looking at a given amount of, of compute and it takes, instead of this much, it takes this much to do it, you know, for the same same power, well, then that's a reduction right there. But then on top of yeah, that, yeah, but I got more data, so I'm doing more, so it's offsetting. And we're it's happy. We're happy factor. that we're happy that you buy more too. Yeah. Well, but what we've done then is we've made that more efficient. So, in other words, you've got a, your relative power bill will go down in relative to what you you replace. Correct. It. Correct. I mean, obviously, if you're, you're adding more power, if you're going to requirements, if you're going to, if you're going to, still efficient. Right, well, right. But you look at the fact that we're able to do that about a two x factor. So if you obviously if you're going to that's go, the key. If you're going to yeah. go three x then your absolute number is going to go up. If you go just like, you know, 1.7 or 2x, then your, your power bill is going to be flat. Right. So that's a pretty, pretty big, big increase there. And as I said, part of that is because we've actually been able to take a server and reduce its power by an additional 10%. All right, so I want to ask you a question. Hey, wait, 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 just one quick follow-up, if okay. I may. Okay. So these innovations, uh, if I understand it, are going to permeate into other HP infrastructure, into storage, into networking. Is that right? The, the, yeah, because, the, because it's the proactive inside architecture. So the fact that it's an architecture means that we have design criteria and we have specifications and documentation on how to do that. So the way you do a common slot power supply and the way that you have it so that it's able to work with the intelligent power discovery, that stuff's all documented and is being picked up and used by other organizations in the company. Yeah, so, and then you get a lot of leverage in your supply chain with well, that, right? Because you've got specs now, you can roll that out to the other groups. You get supply, well, from our standpoint, yes, we get supply chain uh, leverage. From our customer standpoint, once you learn how to use stuff, it applies to a broader range of the infrastructure. Great. So awesome. that's good. Yeah, that's really good. I love it. Great announcement. So a lot of stuff here, okay? A lot of things. Kudos from the analysts and from us. You did a lot of, HP's done a lot of little things in aggregate that really make it work well. And that's essentially an operating system as we were talking about. What gets you most excited of this announcement? You know, what is the one thing that says, you know, Mike, I'm, you, that you love? You go, wow, this is, to me, the game changer. I think it's the combination of the things we've done around making everything in infrastructure smarter, from putting a chip in the 
uh, in, the, in the drive carriers, not only making the drive carriers smaller so you put more drives in because people need more storage, but making them smarter so that there's a big light that says do not, re do not remove when you have a, uh, uh, a rebuilding process going on uh, or you're setting up a RAID, RAID set uh, all the way to the location discovery series. I think that's, you know, as people really get their mind wrapped around that, I think that's really going to blow their minds that we have smarts in a rack. And you're like, isn't a rack just a rack? Um, you know, that we actually have that, and you're able to go ahead and push that server in and have then the server know where it is and then send that to inside control, and you can actually watch that picture populate. Uh, in the, uh, you know, you click that tab for physical location and watch, the, watch, it, watch it populate as you push them in. Great innovation uh, from HP. Mike Kendall, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, this is going to be the last interview for our day. I want to say thank you for, for bringing a lot of energy to it. Okay. Great Always a topic. great guest. Yeah, Mike. yeah, and I'm looking thank forward you. to the next time great I'm here. So you. Always happy to see you guys. A lot of, love the energy. We needed you. I'm going to slot you in when we have lulls of energy because you've got to bring the power <laughs> okay, in there. Okay, okay, do that, do that. HP, smart, uh, architecture, amazing technology, Gen 8. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. You bet. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks.